I've got a problem with it. Uh, bank number, sorry. Uh, start again. This is a four, uh, sorry, a 3S 4P pack. So that's three series, four parallel. One of the bang, uh, sorry, let's start again. This is a 3S 4P pack. So that's three series, four parallel. Um, cell number three, which is obviously, is it a two? Hang on. This is a 3S 4P pack, so that's 3 series, 4 parallel. Now I've got a bit of a problem with cell number 3, so that could be any of 4 rows of these. Um, when I drain more than 20 amps off the battery, uh, which I haven't been able to do until it was all assembled, it's dropping the voltage of cell number 3 a lot. So it literally could be one of these, a row of these or, or a couple of these in, in a couple of banks that have gone wrong. So I've got to diagnose it. Unfortunately, what I wanted to, what I wanted to do was just have one wire coming out like this. But unfortunately, because I've got this problem, I'm probably not going to be able to because I've got to take all, this, all the parallel connections off. These here are the series connections and then I've got parallel connections all along the back so they're going to have to come off just to diagnose to see where the problem is to see what bank and then find out what cells actually gone and then I've got to remove it <laughs> shit I'm convinced that the problem was caused by me now Obviously these are, these are the series links that you can't really see. These are all the series links down here. And then they go, they're on the back as well. Now the parallel links were going obviously between the parallel cells to keep them all balanced. What I think I did was, um, on the two bottom ones, I didn't link the two bottom ones with the top ones. So the bottom ones were actually taking all the drains, so I was only actually having half the capacity and all the current was coming out the bottom two packs rather than the or shared between the top two. Now these are only going to handle 15 amps absolute maximum each so this wiring is going to be fine. I'm not linking it across here. As you can see all I've done is I've put the link onto there uh, because I mean this this will handle bloody what's it 20 25 amps I think it is maybe 30 amps without it, it losing any voltage down these rails. So if anybody sits there and think, you haven't spread the load across all the connections, bollocks, it's gonna be fine. It won't, these won't even get warm, those won't even get warm. There were no resistance, there's virtually zero down there. So it's gonna be fine. So what I've gotta do now is balance the old bloody lot independently, one at a time, which is gonna take a long time not looking forward to it it's nearly finished again um, as you've seen I've done the I've done the parallel wiring differently this time um, purely for simplicity and I've also I've got these connectors here which I'll show you in a bit um, that's all rigged up I've done a capacity test at 40 amps and 20 amps. 40 amps is the absolute maximum I'm ever going to use. Uh, nothing gets even slightly warm. Everything is all ambient temperature, all, all the, 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 the parallel and the series and everything else. Everything is just, it doesn't get warm. The 40 amp run that I did, it didn't record it, so I've only got the 20 amp. But I'll put it on, it's near enough the same actually. Uh, the capacity I'll get out of it is the same. The runtime obviously is shorter. So what I'll do is I'll put that on screen now. I'm gonna unplug this. If I can get the wire out, there you go. Take that off there. Now these these here, um, if I unplug that and that and that and that, 
These are for the, uh, the uh, sorry, yes, for the, for the parallel balancing. Uh, as long as your cells are near enough balanced within, a, you know, about 10 millivolts, you can actually plug, plug a series, sorry, you can actually plug a parallel balance lead in. This will make sure that all of the banks are all at the same voltage all of the time. Um, but obviously the series ones will actually drift. So that's that one. These are the parallel, sorry, yeah, these are the parallel power wires, which I've done. So literally you just plug them into the four and that'll keep the whole pack um, at the same voltage, which it does perfectly. Now obviously before you do this, you need to make sure that all of the cells are all balanced. Um, you can't have them any more than about 10 millivolts otherwise things happen. So that's an XT90 on there. They're going in parallel to balance the whole of the pack and then these plug in here to balance the, the, to balance the parallel cells individually. And I know someone's going to say what happens if you get a cell go down and, it, and it'll start dragging from the rest of it and the wires will get hot and everything else. No, I've, I've done two days of testing with this. When I drag this thing down to below three volts per cell, uh, one of the packs, one of the, the, the parallel packs goes right the way down. Um, I don't know if it's one of the individual packs or the whole pack or what. No, it's got to be one of the individual packs. These don't even get warm, they don't even get slightly warm, they just stay at the same temperature. I'm confident we're using it like this because I've used it like this before and I need to make a connector up for this. I've used it like this loads of times on different things and I've never had any problem. So what I'm going to do, I think I've got some crappy old 3S um, BMSs. And I don't really want to use one, but I think I need to get one used so as I can monitor everything all the time. That's okay, that's just a monitor, it doesn't it doesn't actually give you much info unfortunately. Well it does. It gives you the info you need, but the wire comes out. It gives you the info you need, but the only trouble that I can't see. The only trouble is at the minute it doesn't do anything at all so I need to either finish that off which is going to take a long long time or I need to put a BMS on from China that I don't really trust because I don't know what the hell it's doing. I prefer to use this and I think I may actually develop it. So I'm going to plug this into my solar, I'm going to take the Vic, Vic, Victron I'm going to put the Victron um, down to 12 volts with no absorption because otherwise it will ramp it up to 14 volts and there's my new pack. So I've now got a usable 175 ampere hours, uh, two and a half kilowatt hours, no it's about two kilowatt hours I've worked it out I've got now. It's all done, all cable tied and it's all ready, I'm going to put neoprene over the top just to protect it that's all stop it um, smacking up against anything so I'm going to do that now find my scissors found them I'm going to do I don't know how I'm going to do it now This is the battery I was using. It's uh, 80 ampere hour, but that's not a usable 80 ampere hour. Um, I'll, round the get, I'll get around about 50 ampere hours. The other one, which I've just built, is 172, so it's more than three times the capacity, really. That's the usable capacity. It's actually 100, no, 200 ampere hours, but I've got 170 ampere hours usable. So it is three times the capacity. 
and obviously it's just a normal battery basically, a normal car battery and on the front which I'm going to struggle showing yet I hope it's sealed we've got the Victron on there 7510 uh, it will do 75 discharge and 10 charge although I'm not using the discharge I think I am am I? no I'm not using the discharge I'm only using the charge side of it uh, a breaker there for the PV panels a breaker there for the output of the battery this here is a TNC uh, there's a TNC and there's a Bluetooth module that's to turn the Bluetooth module on and off the reason why I'm using a TNC is it's linked to the Victron I can't remember what it is now it's linked to the Victron basically and it, it, it transmits it wirelessly uh, to my weather station which I'll show you in a bit that's a 5 volt regulator to power that which is run off the battery um, and that's it so what I'm going to do is take all this off and somehow put it onto that one I don't know where or how I might have to 3D design a 3D print a holder of some kind for it right if I move these out of the way here and then I move that over there and I'll get my bathroom scales which I bought to weigh my bike um, I don't weigh myself because I don't need to uh, I don't need scales to show me when I'm fat, I know it women have to just uh, weigh themselves and then say I'm fat because the scales show it show it and that one is 20.8 kilo and this one Okay. 12.9 kilo, three times the capacity. Now I've got to figure out how I'm going to do this. Um, 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 I've measured it all out and I think I'm going to have to print something. Um, so as this, I can have this inlaid a bit so it doesn't move anywhere. The same with the Victron and everything else. Something that will go over there. I think up to about there. Um, I can extend that. That's for the PV. I can extend that and put that over the other side. I'm having it like that. It's not straight. Don't care. This one here is the main battery breaker. The one underneath is for the, the solar panel. This obviously this is for my uh, wireless bit. Uh, the reason why I've got this switch here is to turn the Bluetooth off and I've noticed that if I leave the Bluetooth on by the end of the day some bugger in the, with the phone is connected to it so I have to switch it off when I go out. Uh, I'm going to put that on its side purely because it makes it easier to get the terminals in and out. If you mount it with it facing downwards, it's a nightmare to see what's underneath, so that will cure that. I mean, I could mount it upwards, don't know. Could I? No, I'll leave it like that. So that's going that way, so I'm going to design and 3D print some form of support thing that goes over the back of the batteries, and then I can wrap it around there to stop it falling off. 